My name is Nicholas McIver, and my presentation is on the ethnic group called the Zulu. These indigenous people live throughout a large part of Southern Africa. The main idea slash learning goals that are going to be focused on for this presentation is the culture of the Zulu people, how colonization affected it, and the importance of them, while also comparing the history of the Zulu people to the indigenous people of Canada. Also, I want to look at how colonization could take place over such a large number of people. It was estimated at 250,000 at the time of 1828 when Shaka Zulu was killed. Another talking point in the presentation that we'll be focused on is how colonization transpired in Africa, mainly with the Zulu people, but also within the surrounding areas of Africa. I will be highlighting the importance of all these topics as they come up within the presentation. So to start off the actual presentation, I will be focusing on the Zulu's culture and how they were affected by colonization. The Zulu people rose to prominence in the early 1800s after Shaka became their new king in 1816. A common misconception about the Zulu people is that their chief is called Shaka, when in reality, Shaka was the most famous chief and technically a king within their culture. Shaka would be later assassinated by his own brothers because after the loss of his mother, he began to go crazy. For example, it was said that he slaughtered thousands of cows just so that they could feel what it was like to lose a mother. There are hundreds of different chiefs that oversee many Zulu people, and the actual name for the chief of each individual tribe is called Nkosi. The collective tribe was a military powerhouse compared to other tribes within the South African region. The Zulu were similar to the European ways because the Zulu practiced the act of assimilation. Every battle that they won, they would let the survivors join their ranks, which only increased their military prowess. Due to their overwhelming numbers, as well as superior fighting strategies, the Zulu tribe would go on to obtain large chunks of the Southern African area and would resist the British settlers by going to war with them. Gender roles were established long before colonization took place and continue to this day. The male role within the household made all the decisions, dealt with visitors, attended public meetings, as well as owned the hut and its contents. They consistently trained with a shield and stick, waiting for an opportunity to, opportunity to join the military service. The females had a very opposite role where they would focus their contributions to the tribe by planting crops, looking after the kids, collecting water, and doing a plethora of chores in and around their hut. Just like many First Nations cultures, a drum was integral to many of their ceremonies and traditional dances that took place within the tribes of the Zulu people. There are an abundance of languages spoken throughout Africa, the most common being Izi Zuli, which is spoken by about 22% of all so Southern Africans. Most people within the Southern region of Africa speak the dialect of Zulu and can easily be translated from one dialect to another. The Zulu people were very spiritual with their religion. For example, ancestral spirits were essential in the Zulu religious life. Sacrifices and peace offerings were made to their ancestor spirits for protection, good health, and happiness. Ancestral spirits come back to the world in the form of dreams, illness, and sometimes snakes. The Zulu people thought that magic was real, so if anything bad took place or an instance happened in which they could not comprehend what unfolded, they would assume that an angry spirit was the reason for the evil occurrence. When this happens, a herbalist will be sought out in order to help mend the broken spirit. This type of ancestral religion was completely affected by colonialism. Just like the First Nations people in North America, the Zulu people experienced cultural genocide. The only difference was the Zulu people did not get put into residential schools. Therefore, the First Nations people culture was affected more gravely. The ancestral religious view that most of the Zulu people had was assimilated and converted into the European religion of Christianity. Although many of the Zulu converted to Christianity, the religion of the ancestral beliefs have not disappeared completely. Now there is a mixture of both where people believe in God and Christianity, but still have the same ideas about their ancestor spirits looking after them. Next, I will be talking about what happened during the colonization of Southern Africa 
and what the lasting effects of it were. During Shaka's rule, British arrived in 1825 and had to respect the Zulu power because of how overwhelming their numbers and battle strategy were. The Dutch had been colonizing since 1605 and were in conflict with the Zulu mainly during the Shaka reign. The Dutch had control over Cape Town at this time, which was a vital port in southern Africa with an incredible mining opportunity. Due to the discovery of gold and diamonds, the British wanted to take control of most of the southern regions in Africa, including the Cape Town. The British wanted the land and the army of the Zulu people to be demilitarized, so they gave the Zulu an ultimatum. They requested them to disband or face the consequences. The highly militaristic Zulu ignored this because most aspects of the culture related to fighting and war, so to stop would just be silly. This would cause the British to invade them in 1879. The British were sloppy and unorganized compared to the Zulu, who have been fighting their entire lives. This would lead to the Zulu slaughtering the British in their first fight. And uh, consequently, the British would uh, send over an even larger number of troops that would in fact defeat the Zulu in the next battle called the Battle of Ulandi. <sighs> After the Zulu's defeat, the British would split the remaining people up in Zululand into 13 different districts. Each district had a chief appointed that had an anti-royalist ideology to contain the Zulu from rising into power again. Many of the Zulu people were made to work in the mines and were treated unfairly, which caused several revolutions that were suppressed without remorse for human life. The colonization affected every person of the Zulu tribe. If they were not killed by the war, then the majority of the people were assimilated into the British colony. The assimilation led to many Zulu people losing their culture, and in trying to survive, they adopted the British's culture and religion. Even to this day, ancestors retain some of their cultural practices, but most of them have British ideals entwined with them. The Zulu culture reflected the indigenous people of North America in a few key ways, but also had several main differences which can be seen throughout the history of both groups of people. The First Nations people were much less war-centered compared to the Zulu people, but in times of need, they would fight for their rights and for land. For example, many indigenous people would go on to fight in the War of 1812. Lots of indigenous people did not trust the British fully, but they trusted the Americans even less due to how inhumane they were compared to the British. First Nations people were essential in different key battles that could not have been won without them. The key difference between the Zulu and the First Nations was that the First Nations aimed for peace and they believed that they could trust the colonizers. Colonizers. This would lead to treaties which were used to remorselessly take advantage of the First Nations people and would later lead to cultural genocide through the use of forced assimilation like residential schools. The Zulu people were the exact opposite <sighs> before colonization. They were building an, empi an empire by assimilating tribes that they bested in battle. Also, they did not look for peace, they just wanted to attain more land and acquire more people for their empire. Another way that the Zulu people were similar to the indigenous people of Canada is the fact that they both had their culture suppressed and assimilated by the British. The religion of both groups was affected most out of any aspect of their culture, which emphasizes the painfully negative effects of colonization as a whole. There has been everlasting consequences for both groups and this idea is highlighted by how the First Nations people still have to fight for their rights and for what they were promised in the trees till this day, and how the Zulu people have lost many aspects of their culture and just most of the things about their culture in general. In conclusion, the Zulu was a tribe that was proud to be the best fighting tribe in all of Southern Africa. They had assimilated weaker tribes into their culture while being led by Shaka. After the, Shaka, after the death of Shaka occurred, the tribe began to weaken and would later fall victim to the colonization of British imperialists. The Zulu would be split up into 13 districts and many of the people would have their culture purged from them as the British pushed Christianity onto them. This was very similar to how the First Nations people were treated and it highlights the hierarchy that is present within today's society of race.